High in the mid 40s today under cloudy skies. Later today at 12 noon, it's the Common Man program right here on Da Fan. The Power Hour is live. You can watch it at kfan.com slash watch right now. It's all powered by Quantum. How excited would you be if I tweeted that video? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Okay, I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> um, Alex Keel found a video of Sturgis circa, two, was that 18, you think? Um, would have been 19. 19, 2019 yeah. Sturgis, where um, it's obviously 3, 3.30 in the morning, and Zach is grinding on a bottle. Oh, what? <laughs> well, yeah. what? For about 35 seconds, dancing. <laughs> And, and to uh, be clear, the the bottle's in front. Yeah, he's holding the bottle. I'm behind yeah, the yeah, bottle. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah right. Oh, yeah. I lost that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my gosh, were those trips fun. Man, were those trips fun. And the Budweiser girls were right across the street at a different house, right? And so they were partying with us and having a good time. Good old days, man. It's funny because it's such a, a nice, small town out there. Yeah. But then for like a week, everybody leaves town who lives there in this nice little community, mm. and the whole place just becomes a massive party. Yeah. I'd like to see you play a concert sometime. Well, I'd like to play a concert out there again sometime. Like the house we were in, it was there was live, laugh, love everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Family photos, and then we're just in the back on the deck grinding up yep. against bottles. Yep. Made it up to spittle. Yes. There's a uh, wee with that whole bottle? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll show you guys. <laughs> Everybody got a turn? Everybody. That <laughs> bottle was uh, <laughs> got around. That bottle got around. <laughs> <sighs> the good old days. Hey, Ben, are you here? Today. Yeah, okay. Today, right. Uh, uh, you yes. are here. <laughs> so uh, I can put it in another text, but I'm here right now. <laughs> okay, good. So just look forward. Yeah. Um, take your eyes off of the TV and Alyssa Milano and all of her friends. Yeah. Don't even have it on today. Keep oh, it myself, really? Keeping myself focused. Oh, you're focused. Whoa, no really? charm focused. That's right. today. Keep myself focused, baby. Wow. Straight and strong. Keep myself focused. Well, good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have something for you real quick here. Mm -hmm. You know who Richard Marks is? Heard um, of him. Yeah. Um, he was playing a concert acoustically the other day. I'd like to see you play a concert sometime. When when something like this happens and you're on stage, you can hear the crowd wants to, like, physically assault somebody. Mm. But you never quite hear the artist verbally assault him, and I love that Richard Marks did. Here he's playing an acoustic show, concert, and this happens. Now we fall I'm genuinely curious who raised you <laughs> to think that anything you could yell out was more important than what we were doing. Learn some manners, lady. <laughs> Apparently, the lady was talking to somebody like a few spots down from her very loudly trying to have a conversation. It's like During. my wife at a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can do that at US Bank Stadium. Yeah. If you're in the crowd. Yeah. I'm guessing when you're in the lobby at the Holiday Inn with Richard Marks, you can't do that. Right. Oh. <laughs> Poor old Dick Marks. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> anyway. That well, should sound like quite a few people there. Yeah, yeah. It's a big old, big old show. I think it was he and uh uh Rick Springfield doing an acoustic set. Rick Springfield. Yeah, man. What must that be like though when you have the crowd's just sitting there talking, and oh. you're playing in front of them. Yes. You've had to have that experience before. Oh, like Hawk. every show I ever played. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, it, it is aggravating, man. Because, and it's really it's really aggravating for the crowd because most people have, you know, there's a reason they're there. They want to listen to the music. And then somebody's having a conversation, or they answer their phone. Oh. Mm. Uh, Court, I'm sure you saw this over the weekend. That uh, is it Mark Norman? Yeah. Did you see that whole thing? Yeah, I, st I still haven't seen the follow-up of what happened, I don't though. know what you're talking so about. Please tell there's me. There's a comedian named Mark Norman, and there was a video that went viral over the weekend where he's on stage at a club, 
in New and, York City. And there's a commotion of sorts where there's a couple of people kind of jostling around, and then one of them ends up on stage, and he's just kind of standing there, and Mark Norman doesn't know what to do at first. And then there's some people that quickly, like, kind of usher him out. And then Mark's people or the club's people get up on stage, grab him, pull him off the stage, and get him out of there as quickly as possible. But he, even he's going, what What are we doing? I'm leaving? Oh, oh, I guess we're going. Okay. And so then he walks off stage. The crowd doesn't understand what's happening because nothing really happened, but he was rushed off the stage. And then somebody from the uh, club, again, or his team. This is the best part. Gets on stage and goes, all right, everybody just calm down. Everything's good. I mean, we should probably leave, (laughs) but you know what? No, just stay. No, no, we probably should. Everybody should evacuate. And then people are like yelling, like, are we safe? No, everybody's safe, but um, (laughs) let's let's everybody go. So it was like nobody, it made zero sense. Zero sense. I have no idea still what the threat was or why they did what they did. Max, your hands up. Uh, I'm reading here it was a hoax. What was the hoax? The whole thing? The whole thing was contrived, I'm reading. And it, and, and weirdly, I got to read, I gotta read contrived more. Contrived by Norman? Uh, Part even of weirder, show? it might have been Donald Glover. I got that was um, a hoax, right? It was a Donald Glover bit. I got to read more, but they were saying huh. something that he also, Donald Glover also sent like furries to a Nets game recently. I don't know because I know he's got the Mr. and Mrs. Smith show coming out. So maybe he's doing some weird type of marketing. But let me let me read more and see what's up with this. Wow. Well, if that was a bit <clears throat> that was um, that was well executed because to to further your your point about the story, Corey. When the when they get Mark Norman off the stage, which he has a dynamite drop line, he just like drops this like off the cuff line as he's leaving, which is super funny. Two people actually get on stage from the club. The gal is the one that's like, "We're we're okay. Just sit, it, just stay in your seats. Where it, what? But we should maybe. I don't know. I think you guys are okay." And then the <laughs> other guy that she's with, he's like, "No, you guys got to go. We got to get out of here. Right. The show's over." And she's just like, uh, uh, well, maybe like, and then he goes, nope, you got to go. Yeah. This is, if, you- if it ends up being a hoax or if it is a contrived bit, I would love to know if Mark was in on it. Because if he wasn't, his acting was phenomenal. Phenomenal. He looks extremely confused. Not very like, not ultra concerned, but just something weird's going on. Yeah. I don't think I'm in trouble, but I don't understand what's happening. Because when the people grab him to, to lead him off stage and out the door, he's like, oh, I guess... Are we doing this? Are we going? What do we, oh, I guess we're going. He's very confused. Yes, very confused. So if he's in on it, if it is a hoax and he's in on it, fantastic acting because I totally fell for it. Yeah, same. It's already been confirmed that the whole thing was staged, but people are still speculating about the Donald Glover thing. I guess the organization in the show is called High High, and that's the Instagram account that called High High has been taking credit for all these different little what? viral uh, That was um, a hoax, oh, right? Yeah. Mark there Norman's go. hilarious, by He's the way. He's very funny. He's a very good stand-up. Yeah. Super funny. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't understand it either. Mm-hmm. Well, you're now, a crowd member I, and you hate it. Yeah, you, you, you're in the crowd. You paid money to see this guy. Yeah, but you might be on TV forever now. Or, or unless or the entire crowd was in on it, too, and the whole thing was for social media. Uh, right? How far, if it is a hoax, how far does it go? Right. Yeah, or they lead them out. They stop the cameras and let them back in and say, all right, the show's going to go on. A hoax, right? Right, right. Sorry we all scared you into thinking there may be an active shoot or something. <laughs> Right. I mean, well, that's, yeah. initially, I mean, initially when I was scrolling sure. to some of the comments, some people were like, "Oh, I think he, that dude called in a bomb threat," mm. and he was just like saying, "I think when he was getting escorted out, he's like, I'm going to blow this place up or something." And they're like, "That's why the girl's like, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we're safe. Right. Just sit in your seats." And the other guys, "No, we got to go. We got to get out of here." I don't know. So who the knows? club said also said anyone who was in attendance can return for an actual show for free. Yeah, <laughs> Gary loves it. <laughs> Gary was there. I do like a good hoax. You do? I don't like that type of hoax. I don't no. like hoaxes I, I, yeah. on the whole. Yeah. I don't like the, the fake viral clip. Same bit. here. Yeah. It's It just gets, I mean, it, it, you get the attention initially, and then a couple hours later, everybody realizes that's not real. There there are so many. I, this is what I don't get about the social media generation, the TikTok generation. There are so many videos on Insta or Twitter that are so obviously 
stage, right? Not even hiding it, right? Like man on the street interviews and they'll mm-hmm. go up and ask a gal like, what do you look for in a man? And then her answer is like mm-hmm. some, and it's clearly all, but everybody's acting. And it'll have like millions, millions of views. And I'm going, is there one person that thinks this is real? How are there millions of people going, man, you got to see this video. The craziest answer of all time. It's four people acting. Mm-hmm. They're all mic'd up. <laughs> Even the gal that just, uh, it's what? I think you might be overwhelmed by how many people buy it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think, I would, I would bet 90% of the people who watch those things believe they're real. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah. it's 90%. I, I think that's I what think, I'm saying. I can't believe the percentage of because it wouldn't go viral if right, right. If people didn't partially buy it, right? Because I don't think it would be shared as much. Believe, man, it's crazy. Oh, but if you're on your phone that much, you know, I mean, like my daughter's on the phone constantly yeah. and watching TikToks and all that and, and references yeah, stuff that I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but. uh <laughs> Constantly has so many. <laughs> what did you say, Hawk? <laughs> I said calling child services on you. <laughs> <laughs> because, but, that, but that's the thing is that you, you're taking in so much content and uh, and so many videos that if something does stand out in just the smallest way, can go viral pretty quickly. Mm. And I think just because of, there's not a lot of good stuff out there. I think a lot of people believe it, and then there's also a significant chunk of people that just want to believe it you know like watching a reality show you know it's right. more than likely fake and it's not exactly reality but you still want to believe it because it's more fun to believe it mm-hmm. yeah. how, how great were those the meetings like there. in the last i don't know five <laughs> or ten years hawk here at iher where they'd be like you know what we need to do is get videos to go viral mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah I'll just I'll do that this afternoon. I'm sure that'll be super easy to just yeah, real get, easy to just captivate yeah. all the oh, world. Sure, yeah. I've been intentionally not making them go viral. But if you want me to do it today, I guess I'll just do it today. You should do, do a dance. dance. Yeah, right. You should do a dance. I have You're on camera about. right now. I can clip it. Just get up. No, do dance, dance, monkey. I don't think that'll go viral. <laughs> oh my God, oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> not too worried about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Okay. Should Wait we time. do a, a quick fan five when we get back and then yeah. do some headlines? Let's do that because Ben can't stay forever. He's got to go places. That's right. That is true. That you is know? true. But you're here today. Until I'm here. I am Not on here Thursdays. today for like the next 20 minutes. Yes. You're going to Hawaii later this year. Later this Later month. Later this month with uh, Twin Cities Live. That's correct. That's your spot, Hawaii. That's my spot. That's my jam. I'd like to go there sometime. I bet it's really, really nice. Sauce is in your spot right now, Kyle. Yeah, he's in my spot right now. Yeah. I've seen that view that he was taking pictures of. Well, not all the pictures that he posted. <laughs> <laughs> the view of Kelly from behind. I've seen that view. <laughs> God, I love it. Give us uh, more of the Power Trip Morning Show after this on The Fan. The Fan and the Big Ten want to help you win $1,000. Listen weekdays to win. Hey, it's Garzy. The 20- Purchase of 100 or more, 50 off your print purchase of 200 or more, and 100 off your print purchase of 300 or more. Ends 21024. See staples.com slash print for details. Print more, save more at Staples. Call 9520-RES today and get your carpets cleaned. The month of January is almost over, and January has one of Zero Res's best deals of the year. You can get three rooms of carpet cleaned starting at just 119 but it only goes through the month of January. So call today or go to ZeroResMinnesota.com. Right now, get your carpets clean. Get your air duct system cleaned as well. They'll knock $75 off if you mention KFAN. That's always the uh, the way to save the most money at Zero Res. And if you want your carpets cleaned, air duct system cleaned, rugs, upholstery, tile, they do it all. And they do it the right way. And they have a gotta love a guarantee. Maybe I don't mention that enough, but uh, they absolutely stand behind every single service they have. You're going to love their service, the way your home looks, smells, and feels. Uh, you're going to love the technician. They're going to walk you through the process. Uh, Zero Res absolutely does it the right way. It's why I've been using them in my homes for the uh, last decade plus. 952 Zero Res or ZeroResMinnesota.com. Mention KFM.
Off to Ireland, Jason? Not when the pot of gold's right here. You're talking about all the savings in new furnace tax credits and utility rebates. There's never been more money available. If you know where to look. And nobody's better at finding the gold than Pronto. Plus, save more with zero down and zero interest for 60 months. But hurry, because once the rebate pot of gold is gone, it's gone. Save more on your new furnace at ProntoHeat.com. You know the biggest games are won in the trenches, right? Even armpit trenches. That's right. Luckily, Old Spice, the greatest smell in the NFL, has you covered. Grab a four-pack of Old Spice Swagger deodorant at Costco today. When you use Old Spice daily, you get 24-7 odor protection. It's like an entire offensive line fending off unwanted odors. It's only available for a limited time, so rush to Costco now. Old Spice, official locker room product of the NFL and Super Bowl 58. Here comes Valentine's Day, and here's Andy with Continental Diamond. Any suggestions? Of course. When I think of Valentine's Day, PA, I obviously think of hearts. And at Continental Diamond, we have a great selection of heart jewelry. But for that truly special person in your life, I would suggest diamond stud earrings or maybe a diamond solitaire necklace. Both are perfect to wear every day. And it'll remind them of you. Absolutely beautiful. Just like all the jewelry at Continental Diamond in St. Louis Park, it's ContinentalDiamond.com. Before you buy a boat, check out your boat club memberships and their used boats for sale. Your boat club promises the best of boating from rentals to memberships to great used boats. Avoid the hassle and stress with your boat club. Just show up, boat, and have fun. Visit yourboatclub.com. Hey, it's Chris Hockey, the Power Trip Morning Show, here with familiar face to Minnesota hockey fans, Jesse Pierce, another Livia success story just like me. Tell me why you decided to start with Livia Weight Control Centers in the first place. Well, I started the Livia program after having my final child, and I kind of decided, what am I waiting for? I wanted to feel good about myself. I wanted to feel healthy. I want to be able to chase the kids around and play with them. And in my role as a sports reporter, too, I'm around athletes all the time. I want to look as good as they are. So I decided now was the time and heard about Olivia heard about the successes that were there in the one-on-one support that has been absolutely tremendous in my journey and I couldn't be more thankful and it's working how much weight have you lost as of right now 31 and a half pounds as wow. of right now I uh, could not be more thrilled 19 inches in addition to the pounds which wow. I love Jesse that's great another Livia success story you could be next join Livia today and get your first three months for free visit Livia.com that's L-I-V-E-A Livia.com or call 855 go Livia Livia is now offering breakthrough weight loss medication options as well get started on your weight loss journey the Livia way. Bradshaw and Bryant seeking justice for the injured online at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. From the 651 Carpets Plus, home of the Next Day Install Studios. This is the Power Trip on FM 100.3 KFAN, The Fan. Punk rock legends Green Day just released their new album, Saviors, and you can hear hits from a, along with their albums, Dookie and American Idiot in full when they rock Target Center, I'm sorry, Target Field on August oh, 17th. Right. Come right. On, Tickets man. are on sale now. For more info, head over to kfan.com, keyword calendar. And I love it. Man, this song rocks. It's a great song, dude. They're apparently uh, Papa Roach and Shinedown are teasing a whole lab. Is that oh, right? Don't tease me. Mm, I know. Teasing us I'll send collab. it to you as soon as I get it. I know how big of a fan you are. All right. Uh, two, three. Hey, do you guys, uh, did you guys like old Greg Olson on the TV? Yes. Eh. That's kind of what I, it's been torn like that, right? Some people yeah. love him, some people don't. I like him better than Romo. Do you oh, think that's a low bar. Do you think you'll like him better than Tom Brady? Because the quarterback is set to begin his 10-year, $375 million role and take over the current spot of Greg Olson next year. I've been hearing a lot of three-man booth talk. Yeah, but you read those websites. <laughs> and uh, so we'll, have, we'll have Greg in there with Tom for the first year yeah. to get him, let him not feel like he's got to take over. The, I, I think that makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. It's weird because I saw him on Pat McAfee, mm-hmm. and he was fantastic, Greg Olson. He was he was great. It was a mm-hmm. great interview. But then when you're watching a game, you're like, eh. This Don't is we all hope that Brady's okay. terrible? But Just that's so he's bad at something in his life. The yeah. bar is set so high immediately. He's like, oh, it's Brady. He's the GOAT. He's yeah. going to be amazing at this, too. 
He used to do those. Know. He used to do those Monday Night Football bits uh, on the radio on the fan here. Yeah, where he'd call in at halftime and uh, when he was still a player, and it was terrible. Yeah, uh, because he was afraid to say anything. Mm-hmm. But now that he's no longer playing, I, I find him to be pretty good. Oh, he's really yeah. outspoken. Yeah, now. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 right. right. Who would you guys, you know, very unofficial, mm-hmm. just quick survey, um, off the top of my head. The the A crews are Romo, Greg Olson, Aikman, um, Aikman and Collinsworth, mm-hmm. and Herb Street. If you want to count Thursday, oh, yeah, if yeah, you want to count Thursday, good point, good point. of the of the five, who's your favorite? Aikman and then with who's a bullet. the worst? I love yeah. Aikman. Yeah, I'd have to go with Aikman on that one. Yeah. I, I almost want to go Romo because I I'm not annoyed as much as some others are. Same. But yeah, I and it might might be just because you know Nance, Jim Nance is just well, amazing. He's, he's so the goat, yeah. yeah, so it's it's. But yeah, I, I guess I would have to go that way. Yeah, Aikman's so, just kind of like a he's steady. He never. In a weird way, the I feel like the best you can do is when you I don't notice. You know, like I'm, I don't, I've never even had a thought, a critical thought about Aikman's commentary because it's, it's stellar all the time. You know what I think about, and, and you're, you're friends with him, uh, Ben, so you tell me if I'm wrong about this. Uh, Aikman doesn't seem to care that much about the job. You know what I mean? Like, like he's already won all those Super Bowls and had so much success that he's not out there struggling to make sure you think he's great. He just does a good job. He's solid, you know? Well, first of all, thank you for saying that we're friends. You know? I've seen you guys. Every time <laughs> we play somewhere where they're doing something, he walks up and talks to you. You don't walk up and talk to him. So you, well, yeah. He likes we, you. We are friendly with each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, you smooch sometimes. Don't really? be sensitive. We, we do some heavy petting. It's fine. <laughs> Free man moves. It's fine. <laughs> um, uh, I would agree with you on that assessment about Aikman. He is... Um, I think that he comes off as like, he doesn't have to impress you. Yeah. Like that's the one thing I think Romo kind of drives me crazy with is like, he's always trying to impress everybody with his energy, his knowledge his this and that. Like he, he, I think with, with Romo, it's like say less. And I think you'll get more. And Aikman say, Aikman has a good feel for like when he needs to talk and when he doesn't need to talk, he doesn't need to over explain anything. He doesn't need to be, you know, super smart and, you have to know every breakdown of every single play. He just kind of lets the game flow, and he's got a good flow with with Buck. I think they're a great team. Um, I think for me though, Herb Street's the best. Really, the best. He's just with a terrible partner. <laughs> terrible. I mean, who among us? Um. <laughs> But I, I think if I think if her I think I think you're her, starting a sermon. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who among us? Uh, I think Herb Street is the best. He's the best in college football, and I think that he was just paired with a really terrible broadcast partner on the Thursday night package. But I think if he was with if he was with Nance, it'd be it give him all the money. Yeah, but I do like that guy too. That guy's, you know, he's. I, I still see him as the college football guy, obviously. Yeah. And he still is, of course. But, man, I like that guy, too. Which is all the more impressive when you hear him on the Thursday night call. Yeah. It's as if he's so dialed into the NFL as well. And I know a lot of it is because his research of these college players it transition into the NFL. Hmm. But I think he does a great job of, I think his knowledge is on par with any of the other guys when it comes to the NFL. And he's doing double duty. I still look at a lot of those commentators as cartoon characters, and that's one of my favorite things about that level of broadcasting is everybody's so different. When, when people are polarized about a guy like Tony Romo, I still love that he's different than everybody else. Even if you don't like him, Collinsworth's nothing like Romo, right? They're nothing like Aikman. They're nothing like Herb Street. They're all different. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't get as worked up about it as everybody else. People just hammer on Greg Olson that he's just like the worst thing they've ever heard. It's like, well, go go a little further down the ladder, and it gets a lot worse than Greg Olson. For an A team, though, I understand it gets frustrating. Yeah. But I, I don't think he's nearly as bad as everybody else. Everybody in that spot says something preposterous once in a while. Or, For sure. Or loses track of the situation, so says something wrong about timeouts or... I would kick the field goal here, and then you realize, well, that's just the worst possible strategy. This feels so, like a playoff game. Right, exactly. It, when you're <laughs> filling three hours, once in a while people say ridiculous things, and then Twitter just, of course it's a playoff game. Oh, okay, he's just filling time. This uh, isn't, you know, yeah. I, I do, I, stone. I, I'm glad that you say that because, you know, never – Never have I been in that in that sort of situation like they are they are in. But having called games for, you know, both you know both leagues now, 
it is a long, it's a long time to fill time. I mean, it's like you've got to be on for in college football for four hours. And yeah. it's and everything that's happened in front of you did, has never happened before. Like every, every the game scenario, the storyline, the player that makes the play, the player that didn't make the play, you have to think on your toes for four hours. Yeah, this show's three and a half hours. We don't ever go three and a half hours with each saying something stupid. Right. Have to. Yeah. yeah I, I, can just I, talking. I We're want, dumb. I was telling you guys earlier, I was listening to the Baltimore Ravens broadcast. I'm sorry I keep bringing this up. but <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. Here, here's, um, here's what I want you to imagine. Imagine the color commentator is Ron Johnson. Okay? Mm-hmm. And the guy doing play-by-play hates him. <laughs> That's what I listened to yesterday. That's what it sounded like. The, every time the, the the color commentator guy was trying to make a point, he he would step on him. And then at the end of the uh, the the play by play guy's sentence, you'd hear "Oh, da da da," and it sounded like they hated each other. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop listening to it. I really wanted to, but it was incredible. I was I thought they might fight in the booth I after just, they lost. I can't stand by and 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 let you know all this Jerry Sandusky slander take the airwaves. I mean, he is. <laughs> I know he's great. He's so good. But they were having a hard time yesterday. I think it honestly, Ben. I think what? it was because their team was losing a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and they were not dealing with it very well. But my God, no! And a full so, season of hanging out oh, with each other, and yeah. they just had it. I could see that. I could. Here's my last thing that I'll say about about this: is that the thing that bugs me about the Romos and maybe even the Greg Olsons is that I think that there are guys in the number two and number three spots that are way better that will never get a sniff at being the number one guy for political reasons because they don't have the name recognition charles davis is to me hands down way better than tony romo in the cbs family left fox voice of madden goes to cbs a couple years ago he will never sniff the number one spot because of his name recognition and and just you know, that's, that's it. I mean, it's, he's, he's not a household name. He is to a lot of football people, but he's not a household name to, to everybody else. And that's the thing that drives me crazy. When you, when you know that the, this, there's more talented people in the stable that will not get elevated because of their name and the fact that he didn't have a career like Tony Romo, that to me is complete BS. Well, that's why, again, it would be hilarious if Brady sucked at this. I don't think he will, but it would be hilarious if, Fox just says, here's almost a half a billion dollars, even though we don't know if you can do it. We're, we're going to put you right in the A slot, what, $37.5 million a year nope, or something. Like Go for it. What if he just sucks? God, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he will, though. Seems no. like you're kind of <laughs> hoping for it there. Well, I, I like watching other people suffer. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely. I, Would uh, you prefer I him in the C the spot? Could you take the star first? Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Speaking of Madden, that's why I'm biased against Chris Collinsworth because he was the voice in Madden for a long time. Oh, yeah. So yeah. always, well, Max threw another interception. Where was he looking? What was he thinking? Well, I'm thinking about breaking my freaking Xbox, Chris. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> like, <clears throat> not as condescending as Sims was, though. Oh, oh Sims? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. God. You just felt bad about yourself when <laughs> right. you were watching games or playing games. You're just like, oh, my God. Phil Sims thinks I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll just, I'll just break the disc. Sorry, Chris. Like, I just did what Madden told me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That technically counted as uh, Fan 5. Brought to you by our friends at Wolf River Electric. Go solar. That's Great. right. With Wolf River Electric. Yeah, weren't we supposed to do that in the last segment? Yeah, that's why I just said, let's just, well, we'll just count that as that. Okay, good. Since we just good, talked good, good, uh, good, good. Mark Norman and stuff in the last one. Niners and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. We get it. All right. Yeah, man. Can't All wait. Right. Good enough. All right. Weekend without football ahead. Crazy. Yeah. Now it's time for Headlines. Let's go. <laughs> a man in Florida. <laughs> Apparently I'm the only one who likes it. <laughs> a man in Florida was arrested last week after he allegedly struck a Circle K cashier in the forehead with a chocolate egg. Come again? <laughs> I mean, if you're going to assault somebody, you got to make it count. You know what? Circle Ks are awesome. Yeah. Circle they, what? Uh, circle Ks oh, are circle great. Circle Ks. Oh, aren't, yes. Aren't Circle K and Holiday the same thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I use my uh, phone number down there in the... Oh, they're the same company? Yeah. They are. Oh, yeah. I had no mm-hmm. idea. I did not know that. Got my uh, free pop 
down in Florida. Oh, jackpot! <laughs> 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 Actual audio. That was timed perfectly. Uh, the, uh, the U.S. government uh, reportedly released a report saying it would not be able to defend itself against uh, aliens. Hmm. Well, yeah. Duh. Yeah. yeah. If they have the technology to get yeah. here, they have the technology to destroy yeah. us. I think it's the old rope a dope. They're trying to get the aliens into Earth and be like, gotcha, Bring you bastards. Out. I don't like our chances. Didn't there. they already kind of admit this, that they're real? Yes, they have. I feel like we didn't people care. People just aren't paying attention. They've admitted it like several times and nobody cares anymore. And we have such a distrust of the government that for the longest time we're like, we know aliens are real. And then the government's like, aliens are real. We're like, ah, I can't trust you. No, yeah, I don't like, believe you. Until I, I don't say believe you. This. Until I get probed, I don't believe you. Well, come on over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, today, an is, today is Bubble Wrap Appreciation Day. And a couple oh, years back. Oh, God. That's all I need. Well, you might need it because uh, a couple years back there was a survey that reportedly found that one minute spent popping bubble wrap could relieve as much stress as a 33 minute massage. Does anyone believe that for a no. second? Yes. Yeah? No. no I, I, I don't know. I don't want to. I, I, I try to resist, but I can't. Can't help myself with a bubble wrap. Mm. Yeah, but do you, do you go single pop or do you take it and twist it so it goes. Yeah. Uh, it all depends. Single pop. Yeah, I, I'll, yeah, I'll do both. I'll single pop it and then I'll twist it. Dirty pop. My favorite is when, like, uh, <laughs> two of the bubbles are, like, connected and you can put the air back and forth. Oh, yeah. 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 Ow, ow, oh, yeah. Hours of entertainment for you, isn't it? I love bubble wrap. <laughs> Man, is this piling on, but here we go. Uh, London has made four bids to get the Olympics, and every time they've bid to be the host city, they've gotten it. Four for four. What's the city that has made the most bids to host the Olympics without ever getting one? 0 for 7. Detroit. Dubuque. <laughs> Detroit is the correct answer. Detroit? Detroit. Really? <laughs> their last one, their last bid was 1972. They've tried seven times and have never said uh, gotten Aww. a yes. I wonder. 0 for why. 7, Detroit. See, I'm fascinated by that. I thought I thought the the recent trend is. Nobody wants to host the Olympics because you build all this stuff and then you use it for a month and you, they never use it again. Yeah, the infrastructure yeah. is just yeah. never yeah. used once. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. Hmm. They can't. In make Detroit, that. though, I mean, you got to think the committee's just sitting there going. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, <laughs> they did it again. Right? <laughs> they submitted again. <laughs> Guys, get in here. You got to see this. They're still trying. <laughs> Uh, went about as well as I'd expect. <laughs> so when I started at the fan 22 years ago, it was my dream to say on the air what I'm about to say. And oh I can't my God. believe that today, January 29th of 2024, is when the dream will finally come. Is it a drum roll or something? It is 830. <laughs> it's almost impossible to castrate a hippo. Oh, shoot, I had the damn song all queued up. <laughs> Almost. Almost impossible. Almost. Play it anyway. Their testicles are on the inside, <laughs> and oh. they recede even deeper during a surgery. <laughs> so their location can be up to 16 inches different from hippo to hippo. So it's very, very, very difficult to castrate a hippo. So There's somebody out there that actually knows that. Yeah. Like, well, has experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. But no, they know, they for, for a fact. Yeah. Well, last time we tried to castrate a hippo, oh, yeah. it's not as easy as you think. You I kind of wish, helmet. I kind of wish we were like that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy in town for work, just from out of town, and he's like, let's hear a you know, Super Bowl determined. Let's hear what the sports radio scene in Minnesota is like. <laughs> hippo balls. What? <laughs> yeah, pick, <laughs> hippo balls. I have a podcast. podcast. Yeah. Happy birthday, Oprah. Aww. Good for her. Yeah. Are we guessing her age? Yeah, that's your okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. It was a question, not a statement. It did sound like a statement. Um, I thought I she was know. here. 71. <laughs> she just walked in. Happy birthday. Yeah, and it happens to be her birthday. That's all she wanted. <laughs> How old did you say, Ben? 71. 65. Yeah, I'm going to guess 68. I was... 
69. Yeah, I'll, I'll do 70. God, Max is good today. She's exactly 70. Oh, oh no. Roland Free, 70 yeah. years old. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you've seen you 2 at the Sphere? I have, yeah, it's cool. Uh, they will give the first ever live broadcast performance from the Sphere on the Grammys this Sunday. So what? I wonder <laughs> how that's going to translate, though. Um, yeah. I, I Probably great, in English. That is a great question <laughs> because everything about that show is about what's going on around them. Yeah. And so I wonder how you will show. You'd have to have, like, like, we were in the very top of that stadium. That's almost where you'd have to have the camera in order to see it all. You know what I mean? But even then, well, I don't even know if that would translate, yeah, yeah, right? Because right. isn't yeah. the whole experience just as immersive as possible? Unbelievable. I don't think you're ever going to feel that through. I mean, again, I've seen a lot of, I saw your videos. You yeah. and Sauce. I saw your videos yeah. on Twitter. It's like, all right, that looks super cool. Didn't look, um, what's the word I was looking for? Didn't look like groundbreaking through Twitter. Sure, right. You understand how groundbreaking and immersive it must feel, but it's not like, I, I, I don't think it's going to translate through the screen, but. Yeah, how know. many cameras will they have to use to actually try to you'd, you'd have to use that? You'd have to have VR. Right. Yeah. That's the only way you could probably even remotely experience what Chris and others have experienced is some kind of virtual reality Speaking to feel that, it around you. By the way, um, our guy Rustin, who runs sound for the Fabulous Armadillos, he works for the company that supplied the speakers yeah. for um, the Spear. He told me the number is unbelievable. But not only that, but the new technology in the speakers can point the sound in certain directions so that it sounds like the guitar is coming from the, the roof. Uh, if the if the if the, the the picture you're seeing on the giant screen is above you, that's where the sound's gonna come from. So it literally has the cones that point the music in different directions. Brand new technology. Hundred and forty six thousand, I believe, is yeah. the amount of speakers. How about that? Oh my God. Two uh, things everybody should learn today, right? 146,000 speakers in the sphere, and it's almost impossible to castrate a hip. <laughs> almost. What? Mm -hmm. Almost. Right Bye, down. Almost. It can happen. Bye, you guys. Um, Chris, I will <laughs> see you in a week. <laughs> all right, thank you. I miss you when you're gone. That's all. Right. all. I know. See I see miss you, Thursday, you too. Though, right? I love see you, you Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you uh, through Monday. I'll see you Monday, and we'll have a, we'll have a big bet. Deal. Oh! <laughs> Thanks, PA. Bye. Bye, Ben. Uh, an Thanks, animal man. shelter in New Jersey is offering a unique service for Valentine's Day. They're going to castrate your rhino. Close. <laughs> you're very close. Your rhino. For a fifty. <laughs> you're close, hippo. Oh, for a fifty dollar donation, they will name a feral cat after your ex and then neuter it. Oh. Huh. That's dark. Uh, How well, about you? Got to be really angry. Kevin. Gord. <laughs> oh, don't. Uh, we're still together. I mean, <laughs> yuck. Yeah, it's cool. Donate, I guess. Whatever. Uh, last but not least, I think this is a kind of a fast, uh, fascinating stat. Super Bowl is in 13 days. That's right. According to a new uh, poll, what percentage of people who will watch the Super Bowl? have no idea who's in the game until they turn it on. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. All they're okay. just oh. trying to see Taylor Swift in this game. Or just, just at, at or not even Taylor or Swift. Out. They're just, yeah. they're going to yeah. watch it regardless, but they have, what percentage yeah. of uh, the people that will watch the Super Bowl have no idea who's in it until the moment they turn it on? Those are the people at your Super Bowl party that you Some hate. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's it like, be, oh my God, I'm trying to watch the game. Could it be as high as 10%? I mean, I, I think it might be. I, I think so. I think yeah. it yeah. might yeah. be like 30. That's I, what I was. I was yeah. It's got to be damn close to 50%. Well, I'd say 45%. No, really? Well, let's break this down here. You yeah, have, let's break it down with math. You have about 120 or so million people that watch the Super Bowl every year. The championship, conference championship games will get about 60. Yeah. So oh. you have. Man, you're making great points. Half here. of that. How, you're already at 50% that don't even tune in for the big game. So I think you maybe shrink it down maybe to 40 because you assume that at least they know. Yeah. I would say 40. Zach, where'd you go to high school? White Bear Lake. How do you feel about your uh, math at White Bear? Uh, not great. <laughs> you shouldn't. 9% uh, is the right answer. <laughs> no. no. Who is this derelict and why is he still here? I don't know. <laughs> why does it work for you but not me? Wow, no. that's pretty cool. I like the way you were thinking, though, even yeah. though you were wrong. I mean, that was pretty good. <laughs> no, for real. I get it. I appreciate you had me it. convinced, even though I was right. <laughs> Try this one, Zacho, since you're so good at that white bear math. What percentage of Americans can name last year's Super Bowl champion? Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. 
Now, yeah. there's so many factors, right? First of all, it's just how many people have that memory, yeah. right? Or how many people immediately just forget it and move on. But if you watch the games this weekend, then you would probably know, right? I mean, they obviously, said it a million times. Yeah, right exactly. Yeah. So and it's a familiar team last year, right. a team that everyone's been seeing for a couple of years now. And there's the Taylor factor. Uh-huh. Yep. Thanks, Jerry. Still, I had to think about it for just a second. You guys, you guys, you guys <laughs> man, I have you, yeah. talk your math team. and your logic yeah. out loud. Let's okay. hear it. Uh, well, again, the question is. The percentage of Americans that can name last year's Super Bowl champ. Right. Like 330 million. Good start. About half the country watched. So probably at a half. I would say about half. I would say maybe a little bit more than half. I would say 60%. So again, back, not to <laughs> discredit your logic before we even get there, but you're saying about half the country watched. Yeah. And you're saying every single person that watched the Super Bowl last year. We're going to go back to 40. (laughs) (laughs) We'll trust you, 40. (laughs) You lose. 20%. Uh, It's about a third. The right answer is about a third of the country can name last year's champ. That's a lot. That seems, I would have guessed, much lower than that, just based on our memories. That's a lot. Mm. But not everybody works a morning show and gets up at. 3.30 3.30 and has their memory. I am tired. Absolutely. No, but destroyed. even if you don't watch football, if you watch TV, then you're going to probably guess the Chiefs. Okay, but how about the fact that it, but look at Mahomes it like says how many damn oh, commercials on 330 million people, a lot of those are infants and old people. But still, if you had a Jeopardy question that simply said, uh, you know, uh, sports for 300, and it was basically just uh, uh, last year's Super Bowl champ, there's no way 100 million people get it right. Right. I don't think so. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy that's on Jeopardy. Yeah, I know way more people than that get it wrong. Because they okay, either forget. Great. Thanks a lot for that look in the sports, Brian. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, they either yeah. don't know or they don't remember. Oh, this, yeah, is my favorite. I think it's yeah. tough. Yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. My career is over. Know. Yeah. Uh, the average viewer will only watch the Super Bowl for 29 minutes. Zero point zero. <laughs> is that just... Like a phone thing or like actively? Yeah, um, man, if you go to a Super Bowl party, average, man, yeah, though. I mean, well, you're talking. And yeah, you turn, you, sometimes you look at the TV when the commercials come on, you know? And you're banging. Ooh. And for everybody that watches it all three hours, there's <laughs> people that party? tune in for two minutes. <laughs> what kind of Super Bowl party are you me. going to, Max? Oh, let me invite you, brother. <laughs> He's just dirty and nasty. RSVP, though. <laughs> um, Corey? Yes, sir. Royal Caribbean has a brand new ship. It launched on Saturday. It's called the Icon of the Seas. It's 1,198 foot long. That's a huge bitch. It's the world's largest cruise ship. It has 20 decks. Ooh, um, wow. How many people do you think maximum capacity is on a ship that big? Ooh. Maximum capacity. That's everybody. People on board. Uh, people who work there. Staff. And, yep. Yeah, okay. All that stuff. All getting a virus. Hang on. Just for fun, let's keep this theme going. Zach, I would like <laughs> your logic to be out loud, and you get to guess first. Okay. So there, you said there's 20 decks. That's right. Okay. So 20 do- uh, decks. So there's only 20 dudes. Um, You probably get, you know, what? Five, 700 a deck. <laughs> 5,700 or 500 or 700? Which one were so you saying? I'd say, I'd say probably close to 700. I don't think you get 1,000. So I think it was like 750 I saw somewhere. So 700 times 20. Can I use my calculator? No, this has to be out loud. 7, and 14, 21, 23, 500. Oh, that's way too many. It can't be that many. No, it's got to be half that. I would say... <laughs> yeah. What's up with what you is and half my new favorite bet. It's that chair. So... Just say a number. <laughs> I would. I don't know. Eighty-seven hundred. Eighty-five. And five. <laughs> Ten thousand people. Whoa! Oh, you're real pretty close, good. man. Ten thousand that people. Good. That's right. Maximum a maximum capacity. Uh, sh- the ship, which comes with a fifty-five foot indoor waterfall, is longer than the Eiffel Tower, and called the biggest, baddest ship. On the planet. Hmm. Hmm. It's Max's Tinder bio. Uh, yeah, right. There's no chance it will sing. You know what else is like uh, Max's Tinder bio? 
Uh, critics have named it human lasagna. <laughs> 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 well, call me Garfield, baby. Yeah. The the company claims it's eco friendly. Everybody else is like, oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, it's pretty enormous, man. You got to see pictures of this thing. Yeah, it's the, the weirdest thing. I saw a video of a YouTuber that I follow who was staying on it, and I couldn't believe. I, I, you, you've seen the ship, like their their cabins. They're all like tight and small and everything. Right. It looked like a hotel room. It's un unbelievable. Well, yeah. isn't, this, isn't this the one that has multiple like water parks on it? Yeah, and stuff yeah. like my daughter was just telling me about this. Can you imagine how long it takes to board that some bitch though? Yeah, that's the worst of, of, for the cruises. Yeah, how long those lines are to get on the damn thing? Well, we've been on one and it took forever. Ten thousand people are getting on yeah, this man. thing. Yeah, they say it's unsinkable. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't say. Here's that. room on the door. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! There's a lot, there are a lot of doors. There's there's twenty decks of doors. <laughs> Poor Jack. Maybe oh, the worst wow. ROI on the planet is casino gambling on a cruise ship. Yeah, they, it's there's you got, no regulations. You want to talk about rigged? They got you. Oh, they got you. They got you. It's international waters, man. They can set whatever they want. Yeah. yeah, but people get bored and don't care, and they just give the casino their money. Yeah, just give it to them. Yeah, hi. <laughs> A new study claims an oncoming migraine can be predicted. And this is big, big news for a lot of people out there. A lot of people I know suffer from migraines. Uh, the study published in uh, the Journal of Neurology claimed a change in sleep quality and energy the day before the migraine were clear indicators. The study showed that chronic migraines are the leading cause of disability in people under the age of 50. Did you know that? The leading cause of disability in people under the age of 50? No. Uh, the uh, study authors used electronic diaries to track over 470 people's behavior and symptoms. So uh, they didn't give me any idea how to prevent it yet, but they are letting you know you're going to be able to see it coming. So well, you if you do have a migraine, then do me, do me a favor, because this is going to be very hard to hear. So turn your volume up on your radio as loud as possible. <laughs> oh, no, don't do it. There. Yeah, I, know it's it. I hope yep. that helped. Yep. I thought you were going to whisper <laughs> like those girls do on the TV. ASMR. That's the one. <laughs> that was a tell. He just said, like those girls do on the TV, which means he's watched chicks nude doing ASMR. No, they ain't got to be nude, but it helps. Like the girls do on the TV. They yeah, do, I think. Busting. I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the certain company that yeah. rhymes with razors. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think they started doing audio only bits they did. recently. And the weirdest thing, you know who they're using to voice them? <laughs> Louis Armstrong. Oh, really? <laughs> Louis Armstrong. <laughs> That's the last thing. Wait, how does that go? Oh, look at my little Look off of my dress. Help me, huh? step son. I'm stuck in the dryer. <laughs> Man, she's hot, but she's got a weird voice. The Windy City might have to change its name to the Bed Bug City. Yuck. Yeah, I know, dude. Oh, dude. Chicago tops Orkin's annual bed bug list for the fourth year in a row. The top six U.S. cities remain in the same as last year. Uh, New York City ranked second, followed by Philly, Cleveland, Los Angeles, and Detroit. Minneapolis is 47th. I made the top 50 for the first time ever this yeah. year. Yeah. All Icky. right, we did it. Yay. Icky. That's fine. I'll oh. take that. Oh, grody, man. They're taking over, man. Like yeah. a lot of big cities are having problems with bed bugs. I think Paris had like a whole epidemic. With well, they've been number one for a long time. Paris has? Yes. Yeah, that place is yeah. filthy, man. God, it just makes me itchy. Just yes. thinking about it. Oh, I think I I'm was... legally required to mention this every time bed bugs come up, but uh, my mom used to say, don't let the bed bugs bite. And right. I thought that was just a fake thing until I was about 20. Yeah, I get it. I, I do. did not how think you... it was real. How are you supposed to not let them, though? I thought it was just a figure of speech to have uh, uh, parents yeah. say that when their kids go to bed, don't let the bed bugs bite. And I'm like, I'm not it going to. It just rhymes with the sleep tight. Yeah. I never you tell just, you how, though. You, know, you just keep one eye yeah, open, right. Zach. You keep one eye open, and you go, hey. hey. Have you guys ever experienced <laughs> Get out of here. bed bugs at all? No, and thank God, oh, no, I don't no. think I have. Hawk, with all the travel you do? And the crabs and everything? Well, I know there's no, that. I, I yeah, that's had, a different kind of bed yeah. bug. <laughs> right. No, I have not, man. And it, it is a... I, I, I don't know how I'd ever get over it. <laughs> I mean, I'm yeah. exaggerating. Yeah. I wouldn't be I able to sleep ever again. I would be so I know. Yeah. Thankfully, we stay in some pretty nice hotels, but geez, Louise. Well, Zach, maybe you can stay in some of these uh, bed bug ridden places while you're going from Philadelphia to Los Angeles. He's dead. I sure hope not. I hope but we'll. Uh... Oh, 
blood. Spitting we'll try blood, to. Pissing blood, bleeding. We'll go through the Google reviews <laughs> as best we can. Motels never have them. So no, we're good. no, you're good, man. So just the ones I just drive right up to my room. <laughs> right. Remove the police tape right. so you can go to bed. Man, I still freaking <laughs> love on Friday. Round one, spin number one, it landed on Creasel. Spin number two, it landed on Hawk. I know. And the addition of our names was Zach's idea. It was your idea, dude. I know. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And Murphy showed up today or yesterday or Saturday, Friday. I don't know. I wish I'd seen this story earlier. I'm going to have to give you the the headline real quick. Um, A base jumper from England tried to jump off of a, uh, a Bangkok, Thailand building and his parachute didn't open. And so he did not make it. He was doing it to advertise his parachute company. <laughs> that's a that's a true story. I, don't do it, kids. No, Lannis Morris said has a song about that. Yeah. You know, Holland's just like flying until you hit the ground. Yeah. And that parachute company just heard five no's on Shark Tank. <laughs> Uh, Moss, thanks for your time. Thanks, yeah, absolutely, see. guys. Love you. 5.30 Love you, to 9 tomorrow, 9 to noon is next. See you. KFAN Total Traffic. Uh-huh. Okay, traffic Center, here's a look at the roads. We've had some backups this morning where there have been incidents, but otherwise, we're all the same. Six to nine.